You may have heard or even played Ravensword Shadowlands before. It's been out for a year already and was primarily developed as a mobile game for Android and iOS devices. That didn't stop Crescent Moon Games, however, from porting it over to Steam via the Greenlight program. Boasting improved visuals and a new control scheme, Ravensword Shadowlands should serve as an improvement, right? Well, I wouldn't necessarily say that. Let me get this out of the way. Ravensword Shadowlands isn't a terrible game. It's playable, and in some instances, it's actually enjoyable. It's just not a very well-developed game at this time for the PC platform, and many of its core mechanics are clunky. There are some very large design and technical flaws within the game that need to be adjusted in order for a more enjoyable experience. I'm sure that most of these issues stem from the fact that Ravensword Shadowlands started out as a mobile game with the PC support being more of an afterthought. The premise isn't too revolutionary or enthralling. You fought in an epic battle between what amounts to humans and elves, when suddenly every soul on the battlefield perishes except for you. Confused and injured, you are taken in by a local town and start questioning why you're alive and basically what's going on in this crazy world. It's not really revolutionary, but it definitely serves as a way to get you to explore the game world. There are several side quests as well, but none of these are really worth mentioning because there aren't that many of them. Raven Sword is also a very short game. You could probably run through the game in probably about 5 hours or so on your first run through and still see most of what it has to offer. The area is claimed to be large and open, and while that's true, they're also empty, with the occasional enemies scattered throughout. The enemies, however, are very well designed and extremely varied. There are what look like giant Javan rhinos in one of the starting areas, which sort of confused me, but it was impressive nonetheless. Later on, you'll find yourself surrounded by dinosaurs such as raptors and pterosaurs, and maybe even on the back of one. While it's strange that you go from fighting goblins to endangered rhinos to extinct animals, dinosaurs are pretty cool and it's nice to see them represented. The combat is extremely basic. Melee combat is difficult because of awkward and inconsistent animations, while ranged combat fares much better. I spent most of my time with a strangely overpowered crossbow that even outdamages the strongest sword in the game. The nice thing about the combat though is that the skill system is sort of reminiscent of the Elder Scrolls. You'll get better with weapons the more you use them, and you'll be able to upgrade different attributes of your character as you level up. While not nearly as in-depth as a dedicated PC game, it will be a nice touch on a mobile device. The biggest problem for Ravensword, however, is the amount of technical glitches and overall lack of polish. It's hard to recommend the game when the animations will stop for no reason, interrupting the flow of combat, or when you accidentally double tap one of your directional keys, causing you to roll to your death. Sometimes the sky will just turn dark on me or my crossbow will stop working until I reset the game. Situations like this happen very frequently in Ravensword, but many times they are actually more entertaining than detrimental. I was very amused when I noticed that enemies would walk right off the edge of a cliff if I can coax them towards me, or that enemies will walk right in the water and then follow me as I float above them. Even the user interface takes some getting used to as many of its windows and objects are obtrusive and ungainly, obviously from Ravensword's mobile development. In terms of presentation, it doesn't look exactly terrible. Some of the animations are rough, but the environments are actually pleasant and colorful, if not a tad empty for my tastes. The lighting is impressive for its engine, yet it's not advanced enough that it will make low-end machines struggle too much. The sound, on the other hand, is a mixed bag. Many of the voices sound as though they were recorded in a closet with a paper bag over the microphone. Some soundtracks are much too loud and dramatic for their areas, while others do a good job at conveying the large open world. Nearly all of the sound effects are grating, and you'll hear too many grunts, squeals, and clangs should you decide to play Ravensword. Ravensword Shadowlands is a mobile game stuck on the PC, and that is precisely the problem. Many of the issues stem from the fact that Ravensword seems to be a mobile game first, and the PC game second. While some aspects of the game are admirable, the short length, glitches, and simple gameplay drag the experience down. As always, thank you for watching our video review of Ravensword Shadowlands. Make sure you check out jump2gamer.com for the full written review, as well as gaming news, previews, and reviews.